What's up, guys? I'm Dwayne. I'm Alicia. And this is Blackboard Gaming, where we teach you about all these great board games that are out there waiting to be played by you and yours. I'm a simple man. Don't want to complicate you. I think I finally knocked one out the park this time. Uh, yeah, you did. All right. <laughs> so I got this game on Kickstarter that I knew my wife was going to like. And that game is called Trekking the World. Trekking the World was designed by Charlie Bing and published by Underdog Games. Let's go to the table for a quick overview of how this game is played. Tracking the World is a two to five player game where we the players are travelers racing around the world to visit these popular locations. To set up the game, we will place the game board in the middle of the table. As you can see, the board is a colorful map of the world, which is very eye-catching. Then each player will get one of their own personal player boards, which looks like a suitcase. And we're setting up for two players, so we will play on this side. If we were playing with more players, we will flip it over to this side. Each player will also get one of these player aid cards. And then each player will get one of these tracking meeples. Okay, so beginning with the first player, we would take our tracking meeple and place it in an airport in any one of these continents. And that's where we want to start. So my wife, she's already chosen South America. Myself... I had chosen Africa, and that's where I want to start. The next thing we would do is take these cubes. There are four different colors, and there's 12 of each color. The first thing we'd do is, be, being that we're setting up for a two-player game, we would take three of each color and remove it from the game. Then we would take the rest of them, we would place it in this nice little bag that they provided with the game, and then we would randomly draw cubes and place them at the different locations on the map. As you can see, I've already done that. Now, you don't place cubes at the airport, and then there are spots that's for more players. So you don't place any cubes there. Now, what these cubes are, are souvenirs that our track meeples can gain throughout the game. And I'll go over that a little bit more through the talk through. The next thing we would do is there are these bonus region tokens. They're double-sided. They have a three on the other, like victory points on the other side. And they're, they're 10 in the game. So we will mix them up, randomly draw six of them, and place them in the different locations on the map. And I'll go over what those do later on in the talk through. These are the destination cards. We will give them a good shuffle, and then we will place them face down next to the player board. And then we will reveal four destinations off the top. And these destinations are available to us to visit when the game starts. Then we would take this tray that holds three victory point tokens and five victory point tokens. And we'll place it above the third and the fourth location. So Old Havana and Christ the Redeemer are now must-see destinations. And if a player goes and visits these destinations, they will also get the victory point token that's above that location. So, let's look at these cards. So, as you can see at the top, you got the name of the place. I'm not going to pronounce that. You got the continent that it's in, so it's in Africa. You also get to have the victory points that you will score if you visit this place. And you also have the symbols that you would need to discard in order to visit this place. You would take these four souvenir tiles and place them near the board. And they're available for you to score extra victory points. I will tell you how you can get these souvenir tiles shortly. There are 12 journey cards that come with the game. Six of them have the letter A at the top, and six of them have the letter B at the top. So we will randomly draw one card from each set and put those onto its appropriate space on the board. And these cards 
will grant you special powers that you can use in the game. These are the track cards. After giving them a good shuffle, we will deal three to each player. That's their starting hand. And then we'll paste this pile face down next to the game board. And we will reveal four cards. Now, looking at these cards, there's a number. So it could be one, two, or three. And then there's a symbol which represents the suit of that card. The number matters when you're moving on the board. The suit matters when you're visiting the uh, destination cards. So this counts as one a symbol of that type, not three symbols. So when you're visiting those destinations, the numbers don't matter at all. The object of the game is to get the most victory points and win the game. And one of the main ways to get victory points is by gaining those destination cards. So what a player's turn looks like is the first thing is at the beginning of your turn, if your trekking meeple is on an airport, you can move to another open airport for free. You don't have to discard any cards to do that action. So my wife is in South America. She can decide to go to North America. She can go over to Asia. But she can't go to Africa because my trekking meeple is already there and no two meeples can occupy the same space. But my wife has decided to kick it around in South America. So now we get to the real turn. So the first thing you do on your turn is move and you must move if able. Now, how do you move? This is her starting hand. She would take one of these cards based on the number or as many cards as she want and play that and that's how much movement she has. So she could play this two and get two movement. She could play the two and a three and get five movement. So that's on her. Now, when moving, like I said, you have to move. The only way you don't move if you have no cards in your hand. So, but if you have at least one card in your hand, you have to move. Now, another rule about moving is you cannot move through other players. You cannot occupy the same space as another player. And you cannot visit the same location twice during that turn. Now, let's say my wife, you know, she has to move. She's looking at her cards and she decides she's going to discard this card. And now she has two movements. So she would take her tracking meeple and go one, two, and in at that location. Now, the red cube that as, at that location, she would take this red cube, claim it, and she would place it on the matching colored area on her board to the left. So if she was to ever get another cube of that color, she would place it to the right of that first one. And if you see that star, that means she would be able to claim this souvenir tile token. And this souvenir tile token, if she still has it at the end of the game, will give her five victory points. Now, if later on in the game, I was to get three cubes of that color, then I would claim this from her. And then I could get five victory points at the end of the game. After she has finished the first part of her turn, which is the movement phase, then she could do the second part. And the second part of her turn, she would choose one of three actions. The first one she could take is she could draw two cards off the track deck, either from the face up cards or blindly off the top of the deck. And there is no hand limit. You can have as many of those cards as you want. You can take a tour, which you would visit one of those face-up destination cards by discarding trek cards. Or you could do a journey action. And a journey action is you can discard two trek cards that have identical symbols to activate that action. So this one says take a tour for one fewer icon and gain three victory points. Now, 
she has decided to take a tour. She has decided that she wants to visit Christ the Redeemer. So in order for her to visit that destination, first of all, her trekking meeple needs to be at that location on the map. And it is. She started in South America, and that's where her trekking meeple is. She also will have to be able to pay the cost to visit that destination. So if you look at this, she needs the purple suit and the, the yellow suit. And just so happened, she was lucky enough to get this in her starting hand. So she discards these two cards, and then she would take this destination and put it in her play area. And that's going to get her 10 points at the end of the game. Also, because this is one of the must-see destinations, she also gets one of these five victory point tokens. So she just scored 15 points off the bat. After that card goes, we move the, all the destination cards over to the right. So now, oh, Havana was already a must-see destination, but now the place that I can't pronounce is also a must-see destination, and it's in Africa. So that's where my trekking meeple started, so I might be interested in going there. I don't know. Who knows what's in my starting hand? So, and that will be the end of my wife's turn. Now, on her next turn, she couldn't move because she has no cards in her hand. In the second half of her turn, she's forced to draw two cards because she can't do anything else. And that's how player turns work. You're moving around the board, you're taking tours, you're collecting souvenirs, and if ever a player collects the last souvenir in a region... They would take that cube, then they would also get this bonus region token, which would score them victory points at the end of the game. And they would keep it hidden from the other player. Now, the game continues like that until either me or my wife have collected five destination cards or the fifth region bonus tile has been claimed. Then the game will end immediately, and we will tally up our points. We will count up the victory points on our destination cards. We will count up any victory tokens that we claimed. We will reveal the bonuses on our regional bonus uh, tokens. We will get victory points for the most souvenirs in that color. And we will get victory points for each set of every souvenir. So right here, I have two sets. So I will get six victory points. We will add up all our victory points. And whoever has the most will be the winner of Trekking the World. I'm not even going to wait for you to ask. I love <laughs> this game. Yes, I knocked one out. I knew it was a no-brainer. I knew... That when I saw this on Kickstarter, you've been telling me that I need to chill out on my Kickstarter. And I've been doing that. But when I saw that game, I was like, uh-uh, I, I can't let this go. I got to get this game because she would love this game. I knew you were going to love the theme, I you mean, know. I mean, I knew I knew you was going to just love the whole thing about the theme. You're traveling around the world. You're exploring these destinations. And I know that's what you like doing, you know. Um, what do you think about the components? I so the components are pretty basic, but but that map is that deal. I love the map. <laughs> that part is that deal. Yeah, the map is colorful. I, I like that, and you know, I like the little curves on the end of the yes, board. Yes, I you like know. that it's round. You know, and and. I really, I think the player boards are cute, too. I think that the little suitcases, I think that's cute. Yeah, I, you tracking the world, though. I, I think they should have been backpacks or something. Backpacks aren't as cute as suitcases. All right. Okay, if you say so. I, I say so. <laughs> okay, so what do you think about the art? Okay, the art is phenomenal. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that, that art is fantastic on the cards. I mean, when you look at the different locations and... I mean that that the art on the cars are just so well done. They are. And they don't really look like photographs. They look like paintings, which they are. They're works of art. Yeah, I, I think the the artists I mean, I didn't mention the artists because it was a lot of them. That's in the for one. And two, I didn't want to butcher their name. So I'm I'm definitely gonna put the name who the artist of this game in the description below, but because if I try to say them, I'm not gonna say them right. I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. So, um, what do you think about the mechanics? Well, you know, set collecting is one of my favorite mechanics, so I really like that aspect of the yeah, game. Yeah, I like that. I do like the the hand management. Um, actually, yes, the hand management <laughs> was a bit of a challenge, not in a bad way. It made the game interesting, but yeah, you had to, cause you have to play with the cards. You have to move with the cards, but you also need them to tour the destination. Yeah, the cards have a multi-use and you're trying to figure out, do I use it for the movement cost or do I use it? for the symbol in order to visit the uh, destination. Exactly. And the one thing I forgot to mention in the talk through is when you play a car for its movement, you got to move the complete move. Exactly. You know, you can't play a three and move two. Exactly. You know, <laughs> that, exactly. that's how it works, you know. Exactly. So that's another thing you have to take in consideration. Exactly. So um, what do you think? Is this game easy to teach? I really think this is a family weight game you could teach it to children um it's just it's very straightforward it's not complicated you move the cards you count i really think elementary kids could play this game okay i i can see that you know i i, I like you know it was easy to teach you you know it didn't take that long you you know um now overall you know how do you, do you have anything negative about the game? Anything? There's only one thing that kind of bugged. Well, I really would have liked the opportunity to do the journey cards, but it was just so, so hard because you have to use the cards to. If you have a card, you have to play it. If you um, want a tourist spot, you have to use cards for that. So it was really hard to play the journey cards. Yeah. I mean, I, I did it a couple of times to, you know, and it helped me out, but you definitely have to weigh like, are you actually saving a card? Exactly. In order to play it or whatever, but now I do have two beefs with the game. Two? Two. Okay. <laughs> I'm do, sorry. do tell. Okay. <laughs> All right. The first one is the must-see destinations. Like, if you get them, you get that extra point token. And so, like, if you have a must-see destination and it's worth 20 points, and then it's the one on the end, so you get that extra five points. Yeah. I'm like, I think that's a little... They could have made those point tokens, like, more like one in three or one in two or something like that. And I think that would make the score a little bit tighter, you okay. know? Okay. So that's the first beef. Okay. Second beef is I think they could have picked some locations that I can actually pronounce. I'm not I'm not feeling you on that one. What? I mean they they, they could have Mount Rushmore. I could say Mount Rushmore. You know, I, I, that, that's what I'm saying. Why do they they keep they got these locations that I'm like uh I'm not trying to say that, you know? You just be <laughs> You just showing your Anglophobia, whatever. You just showing your, you think everything's supposed to sound English sounding. Where the no, world is that's bigger not than it. That. That's not it. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. This is a board game channel, not a learn how to save stuff channel. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's called like. trekking the world. So you supposed to go to these exotic places in the world. So I'm sorry, not feeling you on that one. Oh, I mean that that I mean I know it's a personal beef. 
I'm okay with that. Okay. You know, but I can deal with it. Um, so, anyway, that's Trek in the World. We really like the game. I, would, I think you and yours will really love this game. It is a beautiful game, and just it's just great art. I love it. And so does this one over here. <laughs> it's, I like it. Of course, I love the theme, but I like that it's a relaxing game. It's not intensely competitive, and sometimes I just like a relaxing game. Low-key competitive game. So, that's right up my alley. Okay, so, if you like the content of this video, feel free to hit the like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm Dwayne. I'm Alicia. And this has been Blackboard Gaming. See you next time.